this is a lecture on C++ for mathematicians and it's going to be a, a lot different to the normal lectures I do it's got a lot of screenshots in there right and this is on output so it's got integers and it's just really the basics of starting C++ right first now C++ is very useful it's the I think probably the number one language for coding and with it you'll always have to start with this. Now this, this include ISO, IO stream, this loads all the functions that you'll need, all the standard functions. And we know we'll learn some other ones. We've got a C math, we'll do it a little bit later. Uh, using namespace that's just loading stuff. Here, int main, this is saying now start the program here. So all this here, this is the program between these curly brackets and this return zero is the end of it, that's how we end our program and one thing we have to note is that at the end of the majority of the lines we have to put a semicolon apart from here and here so apart from in all the includes apart from int main we have to put semicolons at the end of everything right, values some values here we've got is that if you want to load, if you want to put a, a variable in there, or just a value, we can have int a, and what this is saying is that let a be an integer. And we can go further than that, we can say let a be an integer equal to one. And we can just put this line, we, put, we can put that line in the main somewhere, so between this bracket and this bracket, put it here. Now usually you put it at the, the top, so it's loaded before the rest of the program. You can also, instead of using an integer, int, we can use a floating point, so we put float, put float a equals one, or whatever you like, and this lets you, lets you use decimal places, this one's just single values. Double, that's a, it's a, twice the size of a float, but it uses twice the size of the space, so you can use more complex numbers, and this one you can use even bigger complex numbers, so to more decimal places. And for solving maths, we can use or any of these different functions. So we can use plus and minus, so we can have a plus b, you know, 2 plus 3, minus, divide, times. This percentage we use as a modulo, so we can have 2 mod 3, and that gives us 2. Uh, this, this here, this is plus equals. This is saying, add, let, this, let everything on the left side equal the right side added to it and I've got some examples of that going on so if you had a plus equals b then a would now be equal to a plus b over here I've got the same again so multiply I've got a subtract and a divide so you can put a times equals a and that's basically squaring it over here plus plus if you have a value so we had a we put plus plus then that would say add 1 to it, so A would now be worth 2. If we put A minus minus, then A would now be worth 0. And we've got some examples coming up. Right, now, include CMath. CMath is the one that we'll be using quite a lot because it's a C++ for mathematicians. So we can use any of these functions. So we've got, once we load this at the beginning, we can use cosine, sine, the rest, this is arc, sine, oak, arc, cosine, arc, sine, uh, the hyperbolic functions we can use as well. This is the uh, E, and that should be fairly familiar. Got logs, got log base 10. This is power, this is power. So if we had xy, then this is saying x to the power y. Power, got square root. Seal, C E I L, this makes it round up to the nearest integer, and the floor makes it round down to the nearest integer. So you've got ceiling and floor. F mod, this finds the modulo, but it only works with floating point values uh, in this one really. So you could have 2 and then 1.4 here, and that would output the answer 0.6. F abs, this finds the absolute value, so you could put a value in there. If you had a equal to minus 3, for example, then that would output 3. And again, we have to put semicolons at the end of all these, <laughs> otherwise, it won't work. Right, now we want to make our program speak. Hopefully you can 
read that. Uh, what well, this this function here, c out, we use two less thans, and we put here anything in these quotation marks will be written out by the program and given, and then we end it with more or less thans. If we wanted to put something else after, so if we wanted to put I'm a program, then we also output the value of A, then we'd have, we'd write A with no quotation marks, because quotation marks means uh, it's just words, but if we put A, and then we put some more or less thans, then that's saying I'm a program, then it output the value of A, and if we did some more or less thans, we could do some more text or some more values, So we, but we need quotation marks, remember. And we have to end each line of count with end L and a semicolon. And this just says, right, that's the end of all that, what I wanted to do of you say it. So here, what I've done is the programs for I'm a program. So we have to load the include iostream, include cmath, you don't have to do it yet, but I put it there anyway. So if that wasn't there, it would make a difference. We're going to use namespace. Now, uh, now we start our program main, so we've got the open curly bracket, we're writing C out, I'm a program, end L, semicolon, and then we all, always have to finish with a return zero and semicolon. So if we, if we put that in there, and if we run it, this is what will be produced. It will say, I'm a program, and then because we've returned zero, it will say, just press any key to, enter, to end it. Right. Hopefully, I really wish you could see that. Right. Other tools. If you wanted to change your program, one thing which you might see as a problem is if you wanted to put quotation marks. If you want to put quotation mark, and then you want to put am in quotation marks, like there, then of course this thing's going to think that you're closing the quotation marks. So you'd have I, and then all the rest of this would be nonsense because it's really not going to work. So in order to get around that, if you want to put double quotation marks in, you have to put a, a backslash first, and then double quotation marks. You can also do backslash and do just a single one. If you wanted to put a backslash in, in there, then you have to put two backslashes and then output a backslash. This here, backslash A, this makes a little ding. It goes ding if you put that. Backslash N, this produces a new line. So you put this here and then it'll move down to the next line. Backslash T. This indents uh, the line, so it will move in the margin. And I think we've got an example. So here, what we've done, we've changed the I am a program here. So we put I am A, and we've got backslash N, which means it goes to a new line. And then we've got backslash T, which means it will shuffle it in. So we've got I am A, and then it will shuffle over to about here. Then we've got backslash double quotation, so it'll have quotation marks, program, then we end, we, you don't have to end the quotation marks, but I did just to make it look nice, backslash uh, uh, double quotation, so it'll say I'm a program, then in quotations pro, uh, program, and that's ended that, and that will output this, see, I am a, then program in quotations, I hope that made sense. Next. Right, now we're going to use, ju this is just going to be an example of using the stuff we've just learnt. So we want to make a program to take the value 3, square it twice using two different methods, then subtract 1 twice using two different methods. Right, so first what we want to do is we want to get an integer, we'll call it b, I think I called it b, and then we'll let that equal 3, because that's what we're going to manipulate, isn't it? We'll call it an integer because we don't need any decimals, because we're just squaring and subtracting. Next, we want to square it. Now, one way of squaring it would be to use the power function. So we put power b2. And in order to use this, we would have to load the cmath function. So we'd have to do include cmath. But here we've got, so here we've got b. Let b equal b squared. Yeah, so b to the power of 2. So now we've changed b, the value of b is no longer 3, it will be 9. Next we want to do it again, so what we'll use is we'll use b times equals b. So what this is doing is let b be multiplied by what's ever on this side. So now it's b times b, so this will be 81. 
So now we want to subtract 1. Uh, we can do b minus equals 1. That will subtract 1. I don't know if I did that one. Nope, here I've done instead b equals b minus 1. That's just the same. You can see what's happening. It's replacing the value b with b minus 1. And also, this b minus minus, we've used that here. So because it's b minus minus, that means subtract 1. So we subtracted one here and here. So that should work perfectly. If we put into here, see math, we've let integer b equal 3. Remember the semicolons at the end. We've let b equal the power b2, b times equals b, b equals b minus 1, b equals b minus minus. So subtract 1's here and multiply by b here. And then what I've done is I've said, just so we know it's worked, we can output that b's value is now, um, that's in the, because it's in blue it will just be written, then I've put some more less thans and I've put b. Now here it's going to output the value b which we have here, so it will be whatever's worked out at the end. And you can also, if you wanted, do math in here. So if you wanted to end it, you could still put b minus minus in here and it will subtract one again. So as it's worked, we know it's worked because it says b's value is now 79. I hope that was useful. Mm -hmm.